Do you know the difference between children and child nodes when you're trying to get the children of an element? Or how about next sibling or next element sibling? You may use both of these interchangeably, but by doing so, you're opening yourself up to huge bugs because there are actually massive differences between these, and I'm going to explain that in this video. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And to start with that, I'm going to be teaching you the differences between elements and nodes because most people don't realize the difference and it can drastically change how you write your code. Now, before I get started, I do want to mention that I have a full cheat sheet on DOM traversal, which goes over elements, nodes, and all of the different DOM traversal methods, which one returns elements and which one return nodes. This is going to be linked down in the description below for you. But for now, I just want to cover the topic of elements versus nodes. So an element and a node are very similar in that a node represents anything inside of an HTML document. So all your elements, you know, you have your spans, your divs, your bodies, and so on. Those are all nodes. Every single comment in your HTML is a node. Every single piece of text is its own node. A node is essentially every single small broken down piece of your HTML document. An element, on the other hand, is a special type of node. An element is only HTML elements, so it's going to be like spans, divs, a tags, and so on, but it doesn't include text, it doesn't include comments, and all those other things. So an element is just a special type of a node. And now since an element is the same thing as a node, just an additional type of it, all the same properties and methods that are available on a node are going to be available on an element, but an element has some additional properties and methods on it that nodes don't have, since nodes are just a little bit more basic. Now, when it comes to which one to use, I always recommend using elements instead of nodes. And that's just because elements are really what you care about. You don't care about comments when you're writing your JavaScript, you care about the actual HTML elements. So 99.9% .9 of the time you want to use elements instead of using nodes. Now, before I start talking about HTML collections and node list, which are super important, I first wanna show you some examples of what I'm talking about. So in order to explain these concepts, I just wanna take a look at a really simple document. We have a div called with the classic grandparent. We have two parent divs. One just has the text parent one, and one has a bunch of things inside of it that have children. So let's say that we want to select parent one, for example. We could just say we want const parent one is going to be equal to document.query selector, and we wanna get dot parent one, just like that. Let's just make sure I spell const correctly. And then we can console.log parent one, and you'll see that it shows up over here. We have our div with parent one. Well, now we know that we can access different nodes and elements. So let's say that we want to get the parent of parent one. We can just say console.log parent one dot parent, and we can either get the parent element or the parent node. If we say parent element, you can see it gives us our grandparent. And if we say parent node, you can see it's also going to give us the grandparent. And that's because the parent of this parent one here is our grandparent element. And since it's an element, it doesn't matter if we use parent node or parent element, it's going to return to us the exact same thing, which is this element right here. But what happens if we try to get the children? If we just type in dot children, you'll see we get an empty HTML collection, which I'm gonna cover in a little bit. But if I change this to say child nodes, you're gonna notice instead we now have a node list with one element in it. And that element is our text. As you can see, it's our text that is our parent one text right here. Now, the reason for this is that child nodes return to us all the nodes that are children of this element. And as we know, text is an actual node, while children, that property returns to us only elements. And inside of parent one, there are no elements. It's just the text node. That's why children is a blank array, while child nodes gives us an array with text inside of it. Now, let's say that we wanted to get parent two. Let's just change this to parent two here real quick. And we get the children nodes. You'll now notice we have a bunch of additional stuff. We have text, we have comments, we have more text, we have spans, we have more text. And all of these texts that are in between here is because we have a new line here. For example, I put enter inside of here. So there's a new line in between our text and our comment. In between our comment and our span, there's a new line. In between our span and our closing div, there's a new line. So all these new lines are additional pieces of text. If we were to change this to just children, for example, though, all we get is that one single span, which is the child. So it's really important to be able to understand the differences between these. And every single HTML method that you can think of is going to have two versions, one for getting the elements and one for getting the nodes. And all of those are gonna be listed in the cheat sheet I have linked down below. So I highly recommend you download that and look through all of the different methods because I can't cover them all in this video. Now, jumping back here, we can talk about the differences between HTML collections and node lists because you noticed when we used the children and the children node methods, we were actually getting returned an HTML collection or a node list. And again, the difference between them is very similar. A node list returns all of the nodes. So it's gonna be things like text, comments, and so on. While HTML collection returns to us only the elements that are there that we want to deal with. So again, an HTML collection is very similar to a node list, except for it just only contains elements. 
Now, another thing important to notice is that you have array methods like map, for each, reduce, filter, things that you use all the time. Well, an HTML collection doesn't have any of them. So if you get an HTML collection, you can't use for each on it. While a node list does have the for each method. It's the only array method it does have, which makes it a little bit easier to work with. Now, another important thing to note that most people don't realize is this live updates. An HTML collection always live updates. And that means let's say that you get an array of all of your different elements with the class parent, and it's going to give you an HTML collection. And then let's say you add a new element into your page that has the class parent. Well, this HTML collection that you grabbed automatically updates itself and adds that new element onto it. While with a node list, sometimes it live updates and sometimes it doesn't. It really depends on the method that you use. And this cheat sheet is gonna explain exactly which ones live update and which ones don't. Now, because of that live update, I actually recommend not using HTML collections because this live update kind of is hard to work around. While with a node list, it's going to be static sometimes, and I would recommend using the static node list. And some of the node lists that you actually work with only return elements. If I scroll down here a little ways, actually go over here, you can see things like query selector all, it returns to you a node list and it's a static node list, so it's not going to update with a live collection. But an important note is it only returns elements. So things like query selector all and query selector are really great because it returns to a node list, which is the best to work with. It's static, which is great, and it only contains elements. So it's very similar to an HTML collection. It just doesn't live update itself. And query selector down here only returns elements, which is really great. These other ones, for example, using get elements by class name or get elements by tag name, they return an HTML collection, which I find much harder to work with. And let me show you exactly what I'm talking about, the differences between these two. Now to demonstrate this example, I wanna just change this document query selector here. I wanna get elements by class name. And I wanna get them by the class name of parent because we have two elements with that. So we're gonna get all of our parents and we're just gonna log them out to our screen. As you can see here, we get an HTML collection which has parent one and parent two inside of it. Now, let's say that I come down here and I say, you know what? We're gonna say document.append child. And instead of appending this to the child, we're actually going to append it to our grandparent. So let's just say const grandparent is equal to document.querySelector, and we want to get our grandparent, just like that. So we'll say grandparent, we're going to append a new child to that, and this child, we'll just say const child equals element. it's going to be a div, and we're going to say child.classList.add, and we want to add in the class list of parent. So we're essentially just adding a new parent inside of the grandparent. So if we save this and I just do a console log of my parents down here again, you're going to notice my parents list automatically updated. You can see it has the div parent inside of it that we just added, that third parent. And that's because this get elements by class name returns to us an HTML collection, which automatically live updates itself. So even though I selected my elements up here and never selected them again, even after adding my parent, I never changed my selection. It automatically updated my array here. Sometimes you may want that, but generally this leads to bugs. It's really hard to deal with. So instead, if we change this to query selector all, and we just change it to dot parent here, now this is going to get all the parents on the page, but it's never going to live update. So you can see when I log out my parents the second time, it does not include that new parent because this is a static list that does not live update. So I would need to reselect my parents by just copying this down here and doing another selector. And now if I reselect them, it's getting that new parent, but it doesn't automatically live update, which in my opinion is much preferred. Now, knowing which methods and properties do what inside of JavaScript is almost impossible to memorize. So I highly recommend you download my full cheat sheet. It'll be linked down below and it'll make doing this so much easier. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.